SpaceX becomes the first private company to complete a NASA mission to the space station. Let's take you to the press conference happening right now. Starting this crew rotation plan and now being able to utilize ISS as we envisioned. And I'm honored to wear the increment 64 pin today, so it's a great start to that mission. The astronauts are doing great. Uh, you saw them as they came through the hatch. They're excited to start their mission. They're well, very well trained, um, and they're ready to get started. You know, so we think, we believe that NASA um, unites with our partners to achieve bold missions. And in this case, it can be commercial partners or international partners. You know, next year, um, we're going to have a lot of exciting missions, including continuing space, uh, SpaceX missions, Boeing commercial crew, uh, sending Orion out past the moon, um, eventually private astronaut missions, and also these smaller uh, commercial lunar payload services missions where we're enabling country or uh, small companies to deliver payloads to the lunar surface. Um, each of these are examples of how NASA uh, can engage differently with companies. Sometimes we drive the design with our contractors, sometimes we evaluate the design, sometimes we are the operators, sometimes we integrate the operations. Uh, all of these are ways where we are f melding our skills, uh, achieving NASA's missions, but also creating uh, commercial capabilities in this country that is a big part of our job. And of course, we're taking those skills uh, and actually pushing out in the lunar region with Gateway and, and supporting lunar lander systems as well. So a great, uh, a great uh, ending to the year, terrific to see the crews on ISS. Um, and so we look forward to all the work they're going to achieve this increment. Thank you, Mark. Let's go next to Joel Montabano. Well, welcome again to the uh, postdocing press brief. What an incredible achievement. And to have it happen in the month where we're celebrating 20 years of continuous human presence on board the International Space Station just puts a smile on my face. You know, today or yesterday we saw a picture perfect launch and today a very smooth docking. And with that, we welcome the Dragon vehicle and her crew to the International Space Station. We look forward to a significant amount of time on orbit. A significant number of months will be able to increase the amount of science, the amount of research, the amount of technology development we can do with the additional crew members. A huge thanks to the Commercial Crew Program. A huge thanks and congratulations to the SpaceX team. You know, I promise the International Space Station Program will take good care of the Dragon vehicle and her crew. So back over to you, Brandy. Thank you so much, Joel. And finally, we'll go to, Vin, to Vin Fang. Yeah, it's a, thank you very much. It's an extremely exciting time to be in the space business right now. You know, as the resilience crew just said uh, right after hatch opening, they can't wait to get started. Well, we've had uh, teams of NASA and SpaceX and other agencies uh, involved uh, to, uh, in many ways through, as Kathy mentioned, their blood, sweat, and tears over the years. This sort of culminates in the hatch opening and the crew joining the ISS for a six-month stay on board uh, the space station. So we're so proud of the teams. Uh, the arrival of resilience uh, marks the beginning, as, as, as was mentioned before, of, of another first-time event, this time the government commercial um, uh, crew rotation mission to the ISS. And looking back at another first that happened almost exactly 10 years ago uh, with the same team members involved, NASA and SpaceX uh, shared a similar accomplishment with the launch to a low Earth orbit of the Koch demo flight number one mission in early December of 2010. That flight demonstrated the capabilities of Falcon and Dragon and the partnership, and since then have had 20 successful uh, cargo flights to the ISS, which have now led in just the last six months to these two crew missions, DM2 in May, and then the Crew-1 um, arrival just today. And as uh, Joel mentioned, uh, we're proud to be part of the ISIS 20-year anniversary, uh, which is this month uh, with that Expedition 1 crew arrival. Uh, we're proud to follow in the footsteps of all the other 63 uh, expeditions that came before this one and glad to join for Expedition 64. So a uh, huge shout out to the NASA and SpaceX teams. Uh, excellent job, many hard years of work, and we're looking to, forward to making this a very successful first operational mission and many more to follow. Thank you. Great words to start us out there. We do just have a few um, reporters on the line. So uh, if you have a question, you can press star one, star two, if your question gets answered before you ask it. Um, and as we call on you, if you could uh, direct your question to who you would like to answer it. Let's start with Reuters. 
doing this, and congrats on a successful um, flight. Uh, I guess this question could be for uh, anybody who, who wants to answer. I was wondering if there's any kind of, um, like, bidding or, or quarrels over who gets to sleep in Crew Dragon, and I was wondering what kind of value uh, will having someone sleep in Crew Dragon provide to SpaceX and NASA? Are you guys getting any data out of that, or what kind of tests are you, are you going to perform with that? Thanks. 